Should elbow sleeves be allowed in street lifting competitions? This question has to be asked because of the recent trend in the number of street lifters that are now using equipment that assists the weighted dip in one way or another, whether through elbow sleeves or something else. In fact, the street lifting community has been recently vocal about the use of such equipment. Multiple top French street lifters were expressing their viewpoint, which happens to be against this recent trend. In today's video, I wanted to review some of these viewpoints that these street lifters had, starting with Aubin, who shared a street lifting starter pack meme with the following comments he wrote underneath. Translated, he writes, we're going to rename our sport. It's no longer street lifting, but assisted lifting. Get your wallets ready in addition to the entry fees for competitions with no cash prizes. For just a thousand euros of equipment, you can start this street sport. Super powerful knee sleeves and elbow sleeves are prohibited even in powerlifting for the bench. On your marks, get set, assist yourselves. This is an interesting viewpoint because Aubin calls out the fact that not only do you have to compete in a sport where there are hardly any cash prizes, but in order to win those competitions, you have to buy additional equipment. And speaking for myself and perhaps for all other street lifting organizers, it's quite difficult at this point in time to include a sizable cash prize without a solid business model. For a sport without decades of established history, money is scarce from both a sponsorship perspective and a participant perspective. By default, street lifting has a prerequisite. You can't participate in street lifting if you can't do the bodyweight street lifting movements for reps. Therefore, you eliminate 95% or more of the population and this removes a significant revenue source. But more interestingly enough, he does provide a good point. In addition to the physical barrier, which already limits the number of participants, there is now a financial barrier, which is to pay entry fees and specialized equipment. One of the best ways to accelerate the growth of anything is to have it accessible to as many people as possible. Therefore, having these two barriers makes the sport grow slower. Aubin also points out that knee sleeves and elbow sleeves are prohibited, even for the bench, implying that the dip and bench should be treated equally in terms of the equipment usage. I think trying to compare the effects of elbow sleeves in the bench versus the dip is like comparing apples to oranges. It's two different movement patterns. The pressure of the elbow is significantly higher on the dip than the bench for an equivalent weight. Therefore, there is a justification to include elbow sleeves for dips from that perspective. One reaction to Aubin's meme was by Ludo, and Ludo points out that if a movement becomes too difficult, then you can just rely on equipment. Ludo says they are too lazy to become stronger. They rely on brands such as Inzer and SBD, and if it's not possible to lift the weights, then they just modify the execution rules a bit, and no one complains except for a few crazy people. Another very interesting take saying that all equipment users are lazy. I think calling equipment users lazy is a bit of a stretch. Do we really think that someone like Tonio, who dipped 190 in sleeves, is incapable of setting a new sleeveless PR, which is currently 170? I have no doubt that Tonio could dip 180 sleeveless if he peaked. Ludo's viewpoint seems to imply that sleeve dippers are inflating their numbers by 30 kilos, and realistically, I don't think this is the case. Someone like Bench Crowley is able to do a 100 kilo dip with an 8 second pause, sleeveless. I think if he tapered from that lift, I'm quite positive he could get within 15 kilos of his elbow wraps PR. And Mika Scholes was only 7.5 kilos from his sleeveless PR during the DAC competition. Surely he should have dipped 150 if sleeves were as effective as Ludo claims. Also, the last part about the rules are very interesting. I've never heard of a case where organizations are purposefully changing the rules to make the rep significantly easier. The only organization I can recall that has done this is the ISF with the pull-up rules, and even then, their execution is still the most difficult execution relative to all the other organizations. Perhaps he's referring to the judging rather than the actual rules, as I do think some of the judging in a few of these competitions were questionable, but that is always going to happen as this is the nature of human judging. The last reaction to Aubin's meme I wanted to discuss is Theo's. Theo says, well, the previous story was intentionally exaggerated, but more seriously, there are two points that annoy me about the direction the sports is taking. 
elbow sleeves. Since we're doing street lifting, let's leave the street movements as they are. In powerlifting, they have raw and equipped bench, so we can do the same. Those who want to use equipment can have their own competitions. I've seen some street competitions where guys are wearing powerlifting singlets. I have nothing against powerlifting. I love the sport and participate in it myself. But we shouldn't try to be clowns and imitate others' identities just to make this great sport grow. Also, I'm okay with using equipment in squats to add more weight to the bar and achieve big lifts like in powerlifting. But I wouldn't mind the opposite either, as long as everyone is on an equal playing field. It's interesting that he points out that street lifting consists of street movements, which implies that they should be as accessible as the bodyweight movements. However, with street lifting, I don't think this is the case. I think the all four format is a format that favors people with slightly higher income. To train it, you need a variety of different equipment, such as non-bumper weight plates, good dip bars, a high enough pull-up bar, ceiling space, a barbell, and a squat rack. None of the commercial gyms I go to don't meet all of these requirements. So it doesn't make sense to think that street lifting is just as accessible as something like street workout. Both sports require completely different setups. Also, it's interesting that Theo points out the use of singlets. It is allowed in the USA Street Lifting Rulebook, and one of the reasons I allow it is because it lets lifters wear something that isn't loose and wouldn't get in the way during the movements. You're also free to wear compression t-shirts if you so choose. But I definitely did not allow the singlet just to copy powerlifting. And I find it interesting that Theo says we shouldn't try to imitate others' identities, referring to street lifting copying powerlifting by allowing the singlet, but then adds that it's okay to use equipment in squats to add more weight to the bar and achieve big lifts, like in powerlifting. But overall, perhaps we are at a point where streetlifting needs to be separated into two different divisions, raw and equipped. I am supportive of the idea, but I am skeptical of how it will be executed. Are we going to allow elbow wraps and slingshots for the dips in the equipped division? Right now, Final Rep and ISF have the most influence over how streetlifting is conducted worldwide. Currently, the ISF does not allow for elbow sleeves, but Final Rep does. And interestingly enough, the elbow sleeves are optional. I think if you wanted to have an equal playing field, as Theo suggested, perhaps considering that if elbow sleeves are allowed in competition, then all athletes must wear elbow sleeves to keep all the variables the same. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And let me know your thoughts on whether or not elbow sleeves should be allowed in competition in the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.